Hello and welcome back to the Tech Rally channel and today we're going to be talking about how much HTML and CSS do you need to learn when starting off as a junior developer? It's a question I get asked a lot and it's time to just settle this once and for all. We won't talk about JavaScript because that is another can of worms that requires a dedicated video, but I promise that I will talk about it if you want to hear about it. So let me know in the comments below if that is something that you would like to see. I'll be sharing what I believe are important areas to learn in HTML and CSS and why these skills matter. Whether you're a complete beginner or someone that's just looking to level up as a software engineer, I believe that this video will be helpful in giving you the direction that you need. Before we get started, if you find this video helpful, hit that thumbs up. It really helps out the channel. And if you want more tips about web development, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you can stay up to date whenever I post new videos or content. Without further ado, let's get into this topic. Let's agree that web development is pretty hard, especially for new developers coming to this space. At the core, web development is broken down into three pillars, which is HTML, CSS and JavaScript. Yes, I know that there are other languages outside of JavaScript, but for the purpose of this video and the future video, I just think that defining these three pillars are a little bit easier to outline. With that being said, there are other languages out there that are perfectly fine for software development, web development like C Sharp, Ruby, and Python, you name it. You can do web development with many different languages, but again, let's just focus on these three pillars. But particular in this video, let's just focus on HTML and CSS. And no, I'm not going to debate whether or not HTML is a programming language, but let's just move on from that topic. Speaking of HTML, what is HTML? HTML is also known as a hypertext markup language. You can think of it as a skeleton of a web page. Imagine that you're building an exterior of a house. The skeleton would be the walls, the roof, the doors, the windows. At its core, the house serves its purpose being a house that you can live in. But like usual, homeowners don't want an ugly house. They want to make it pretty. And that's where CSS comes in. CSS makes sure HTML come to life by making it more beautiful. Using our house example, CSS will provide the colors, the patterns, the dimensions, and spacing on how the house should look. We don't want our door to be right next to our window, right? CSS gives us the ability to move around the skeleton template to give our house some life. In web development, CSS dictates how your page will look, the layout, the colors, the font, and much, much more. With HTML and CSS, we create the foundation of most of the websites you see on the internet today. As a web developer, your mastery over HTML and CSS will help you build amazing static websites. And if you're starting off as a junior developer working on a team, it is really important to connect the dots between these two pillars. So how much CSS and HTML do you need to know? Let's break that down. Hey everyone, this video is sponsored by me, Tech Rally. If you're looking to build a beautiful landing page for your product or personal project, but don't know where to start, look no further. Built in React, Next.js, and Tailwind, the Inspire template will provide you with everything that you need. A beautiful landing page, a services page, a pricing page, you name it. Anything that you would use on a professional homepage, it's there. The Inspire template is currently on a tier-based pricing. Right now, if you get in early, it's $11.99 but it's gonna jump to $14.99 and eventually to final price of $24.99. So get it early while you can. Don't just build projects, make it shine in front of everyone with a beautiful initial page. Now let's get back to our video. All right, let's start off with HTML. HTML is where it all begins. As a junior developer, there are a few core concepts that you really need to iron out. First major important key is to just understand the syntax of HTML. That includes knowing how to do the opening and closing tags, how to nest tags properly, and how to structure your HTML document with doc type, HTML, head, and body tags. Next, it's important to get yourself familiarized with the wide array of HTML tags. If you didn't know, there are over 100 HTML tags, but don't worry, you don't need to memorize them all. I think it, for me personally, I only memorize maybe 20 or less. And the most common ones that you'll probably need to know is the div, the span, the A, image tag, P, and H1 through H6, which are headers. Of course, let's not forget about the form tag and its associated elements like the input, label, and text area, and button. But again, knowing these HTML tags is going to be super crucial to make sure that you write good HTML whenever you're building out your web pages. Beyond the tags and syntax, a modern 
developer should really understand the semantics of HTML. That means using the correct HTML for its intended purpose, like using a header, a footer, a nav bar, article, section, and a site tags appropriately. This aids in accessibility and also makes it better for search engines to find your site. But why is mastering HTML so important and so beneficial? Well, because HTML is the backbone of the web. Understanding HTML will help you build and troubleshoot websites more effectively. Plus, it's the stepping stone to understand CSS and even JavaScript as they often work in tandem with HTML. Take your time, practice, and master HTML. Try recreating some of your favorite websites or specific components of them. The more you practice, the more you'll learn, and the more you'll get closer to achieve your goal. Now let's move on to CSS. The four things I want to talk about in regards to CSS for junior developers is number one, basics of CSS syntax, selectors and declaration. Number two, styling your elements based on class, ID, and various selectors. Number three, the box model, padding, border, and margin. And number four, positioning. The last one, I'm not gonna talk about too in depth, but this is really important in regards to knowing CSS and how to style your elements, position your elements, and whatnot. So let's start off with the first one. First thing you need to understand is the basics of CSS syntax. With CSS, you create rule sets with selectors and declarations. Let's look at an example where we style a P tag. In this example, I have a P tag that says this is a blue text. To apply a blue color to this text, what I do is I create a P selector and apply the color decoration of blue. Now you can see that I was able to apply a blue color to this P tag text. The second example I want to show you is styling your elements based on class or ID. In general, selecting based on HTML elements is not great because your styles will apply to every HTML element. So how do we fix this? This is where style targeting based on class names and IDs are essential. When you style based on class or ID, you're specifically setting the style of that one element. Let's look at that example. The next thing I want to show you is how to apply styles based on class names or IDs. So what I'm going to do in this example is do a couple of P tags that says this is a red text, this is a green text, and this is a yellow text. But as you can see, all of it is showing the text in blue color. And that's because we applied the color of blue to all the P tags. To fix this, we what we need to do is we need to apply styling based on the class name. So here I'm gonna say, Blue is color blue, red is color red, green is color green. Perfect. And last, I'm going to just do yellow dash, I can name it anything, color yellow. The reason why I did this is to show you that the class name of red doesn't really necessarily matter. It just happens just for consistency that I did it this way. But as long as you define your class names correctly, then you should be able to apply your styles appropriately. So here I applied the class of blue, class of green, and class of yellow, I can name in anything. And once I finish this up, you can see that all of the text has changed to their appropriate colors. So again, no emphasis on the actual blue class name or red class name or green class name. It's more along the lines of you have to make sure your class names for your styles match the class names for your HTML. The next thing I want to show you is another version where this is orange and I apply the class name of blue. And as you can see that the blue style is applied to the text orange. In CSS, IDs have a strong priority over class names. And that's why I use that number sign orange and I applied the color orange. And now if I do ID equals orange, the text will be orange. So even if you apply a class name of blue to this text, if you put an ID at the same time, it will take priority over the class name. So hopefully this makes sense to show you how styling works when using class names and IDs. The third thing I want to talk about is CSS box model, padding, border, and margin. Looking at this image, it is a little confusing. They all kind of overlap on top of each other. But when you look at a real life example, which is what I'm going to be showing you, it's going to start making a lot more sense. So let's keep this image up and look at a real life example of how padding, margin, border work. The next thing I want to show you is the box model. And I created two divs called this is card one and this is card two. Nothing too special here, and I have the text align center. Now I'm going to apply a border called one pixel solid black, and as you can see that there is that border. In this case, it's five, but for us, it's one pixel. And next thing we're going to do is we're going to add a 50 pixel. So now you can see that the padding is happening internally in the card. 
And as you can see right now, there's this border that's being overlapped because the top and bottom borders are too close to each other. So what we're gonna do is apply a margin. So now we apply the margin on the top and the left and the right technically. But as you can see, by applying margin, it creates spacing between the two boxes. Whenever you're trying to make your card look bigger, you apply padding. And whenever you're trying to create separation between two cards or two elements, you apply margin. As you get more and more familiar with this, you'll be able to notice uh, in this situation, I'm gonna apply padding. In this other situation, I'm gonna apply margin. So try to make sure you understand how to use one over the other and you'll figure things out. Hopefully this helps. There is a website called W3Schools and if you're a web developer, I'm sure you've seen it before. This talks about positioning and it's really important to understand that sometimes you'll be in a situation where certain elements fall outside of the normal standard process and that's where positioning and understanding how to move your elements around on a web page is super important. So highly recommend you to check out this website to really understand how absolute position works, relative position work, fixed position works, even sticky. There's just a lot of variable positionings out there. Personally for me, I generally like to just use the position relative, position fixed, and position absolute. Those are more of the common ones, but there are gonna be situations where you might have to use the fixed or sticky. Either way, definitely check out this webpage because it really breaks it down in a very simplified manner of how positioning works. I didn't talk about responsive or mobile optimized CSS, but I want you to look into that as well. Ideally, we want our websites to not only look pretty on the desktop, but also on smaller screens. There is a statistic out there that says that most people are looking at web pages on their phones more than their desktop. So you really can't cheapen out on not styling in mobile responsive. So whenever you do build your website, you have to make sure it's mobile optimized. So that is something that requires a little bit more attention in terms of media queries and all of that, but I recommend you to Google and look into how to make sure your CSS is mobile optimized. All right, we covered a lot of ground today. We talked about HTML, CSS, and what you need to know as a junior developer. There is that elephant in the room, JavaScript. And if you wanna hear my opinions about what you need to know as a junior developer in terms of JavaScript, let me know in the comments below, and I'll make sure to make that as my next video. Remember, becoming a proficient developer doesn't happen overnight. It takes time and effort, but with consistent practice, real world application, the use of online resources, community involvement, staying up to date, and a positive attitude towards mistakes, you will be well on your way to success. So there you have it, a roadmap for what you need to learn in HTML and CSS as a junior developer. We covered the basics such as syntax and common tags for HTML, styling and layout in CSS. Remember, the key is balance, understanding how these languages work, and more importantly, how they connect will be essential in your journey as a software developer. I hope this video can give you a clear picture of what you need to focus on and how to progress. But remember, everybody's journey is unique. You might take more or less time to master these concepts and that's okay. The important thing is to keep going, keep learning and keep coding. I would appreciate a thumbs up and share with others who might benefit from it. And if you wanna keep up with more videos like this, be sure to hit that like and subscribe and also hit that notification bell so you can stay up to date whenever I post. This is Tech Rally signing off. But remember, learning does not stop here. Keep building developers, your time will come.